The maintenance of the blood flow is essential to life. The loss of blood flow may occur because the heart that pumps the blood fails, because of blood leakage, or because the blood vessels become obstructed. The coagulation system has evolved to deal with the latter two events under normal circumstances by providing qualities which maintain blood in a fluid state within the vasculature while at the same time addressing leaks. Even under physiological conditions, a small tear can appear in the wall of a blood vessel. In order to prevent blood loss, platelets and coagulation factors such as the pivotal factor 10 acting in a coordinated manner close this wound. The platelets are responsible for a first sealing of the tear. Then a number of coagulation factors are activated, leading to the formation of fibrin strands which stabilize the growing clot. In a first step towards clot formation, platelets are recruited to the site of vessel injury by now exposed molecules of the vessel wall such as collagen and von Willebrand factor. This factor mediates the linking of platelets to collagen via a specific receptor in the platelet membrane. The resulting change of shape of the platelet from its resting state into the dendritic form indicates activation. Platelet activation to snowball. The clot grows rapidly. Activated platelets also trigger the coagulation cascade and thus the formation of thrombin. Thrombin, in turn, stimulates platelet activation even further, a continuous feedback loop. Additionally, thrombin induces the formation of fibrin for the mesh stabilizing the clot. Platelet These large amounts of thrombin cause the further activation of platelets and the enhanced formation of fibrin. Fibrin then forms strands, making up the mesh that stabilizes the platelet plug in an arterial clot and holds together the red blood cells in a venous clot. Thrombin converts fibrinogen to fibrin. Fibrin initially forms a loose mesh but then factor 13 causes the formation of covalent crosslinks, which convert fibrin to a dense aggregation of fibers. Platelets and red blood cells become caught in this mesh of fiber, thus the formation of a thrombin. Thrombin cleaves activation peptides from fibrinogen to form soluble fiber monomers. Now these subsequently polymerize to form an insoluble, loose fibrin clot at the site of the injury. Thrombin also activates circulating factor 13, a transglutaminase, which catalyzes the formation of covalent intermolecular crosslinks between fibr fibrin molecules, providing the necessary structure for a stable fibrin clot. Thrombin also serves to activate the surrounding platelets that, in conjunction with the fibrin clot, seal the breach in the vessel wall. Factor 13, the precursor to the transglutaminase factor 13A and fibrinogen, are cleaved by the small amounts of thrombin initially produced. The products of fibrinogen cleavage by thrombin begin to be observed when less than two tenths percent of the total thrombin, 2A, to be ultimately accumulated is produced. Fibrin polymerization resulting in a visible clot occurs when approximately 35 percent of the A peptides and 10 to 15 percent of the B peptides are released. The factor 13A cross-linking process occurs coincidentally with this initial fibrin formation. The aggregated platelets and fibrin resulting from thrombin formation are the principal components of initial vascular plug formation and now provide the engine which achieves hemostasis.